I, I'm happy to see adults as well. I see my four dogs and my husband and my daughter, and that's it. <laughs> so it's good to see people outside of outside of that. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, the recording options in PowerPoint, and we have the wonderful crew, Carmen and Ophelia. They're here as well, and they will be answering questions in the chat um, related to the topic for the for this 30 minutes, which is uh, recording options in PowerPoint. So these webinars are very focused and short on those specific topics. So we want to keep that focus on the topics that we're on so that we can provide you with the right resources and the right answers for the questions that you ask. So if you kind of keep your, your directed to whatever it is that we're talking about for those 30 minutes. And today again, in this case, it is the recording options that we have in PowerPoint. So I'm actually going to turn my camera off so that it doesn't take away from my bandwidth when I start sharing my screen. And I've been having some internet trouble. So give me a second. See, I froze. From you, Michelle, there's a little bit of a muffle from the sound. OK, is that better? I turned the camera oh, much, off. Much yeah, yeah much better, see, much see too, too many things uh, running. So um, I'm going to share my screen with you. And if you want to follow along, um, you can open up PowerPoint, just regular old PowerPoint in the desktop. You can open up PowerPoint so that you're able to kind of follow along with me. But the only thing is, when you're following along, you're going to have to be able to switch between um, the Teams meeting and the PowerPoint app. And how you're going to do that is looking at the bottom taskbar and just clicking on, I'm going to show it to you right now. So let me share my screen. Hopefully everything shares OK without me being kicked out again. OK, you should be able to see my screen. Whoa, come on. Something that I and sorry, I'm going to transition to here. OK, great. All right, so if you see what I'm doing, I'm actually clicking between the meeting, which is right here in my bottom right, and then the actual app. And so on my taskbar down here, I can just click between the meeting and the PowerPoint. I just have to make sure that I'm clicking between the two down here at the bottom. OK, so that's how if you want to follow along, you're able to you're able to follow along. So click in between the meeting and the PowerPoint. So just right down here at the bottom. OK, so today's agenda, we're going to talk about these things um, that you see these eight things, how to add the recording tab to PowerPoint. That's the most important thing, how to use the screen recording, the slide recording, saving as a show, saving to your device, uploading into stream and sharing the content with your students. So that's what we're going to talk about um, in terms of recording and giving access to your students. So I'm actually going to X out of this one and just open up a blank PowerPoint. There we go. OK, so the first thing that you have to do is make sure in your PowerPoint that you have this tab right here, this recording tab enabled. It has to show up in your ribbons. So to do that, you're going to go to file. You're going to go to options. Once the options open up. And of course, there's a little bit of a delay. <laughs> um, you will click on in the left hand side, customize ribbon. Jeez, there is such a delay here. And where once that customized ribbon opens up, you're going to find it here on the right hand side. Um, you can see that there is an option for recording. You just have to make sure that that option is checked off. It's ticked off. So when that little tick mark is there, it enables the ribbon 
so that the ribbon then shows up here in your in your PowerPoint. OK, so we're going to explore what's under this recording ribbon. And actually, let me add a couple slides just so we have some slides on the um, screen. All right, so I'm going to click here on recording and you have these options here and what this is what we're going to explore in the next few minutes. So the first option um, that we could take a look at is recording slideshow. So I'm sure you have seen, you know, PowerPoints with teachers talking over slides, uh, teachers annotating over slides. Sometimes there are paid programs or screen recording programs that you may have to have a subscription to to do that. But within PowerPoint, you have complete access to that um, with that recording tab. So I am choosing the option to just record from the beginning or record from the, the current slide. It depends on whichever you know however you want to record so i'm on slide one which is the beginning so it, it doesn't it doesn't quite matter so what happens is it allows me to record voice and record uh annotate on a slide so if i select record i have my content on the slide i can also oops let me stop. So I forgot to do this at the bottom right here. I have I can turn my camera on where as I am recording and talking on each slide, the students will be able to see me here at the bottom right. So you could turn that off or on. It's, it's absolutely up to you. If you want the students to see you while you're talking, you can certainly use that option. If you just want them to hear your voice, you can turn it off. So let's just do one with it and one without it so you can see. So I am going to hit this record option. OK, counts me down. Hi, students. Welcome to this class. Um, today we're going to talk about. Today we're going to talk about learning, uh, learning about themes. In literature. And I'm writing with my mouse so you could see. But if you actually had content on here, right, you would be able to um, highlight things, circle things. This is kind of like, a, you know, it's like a whiteboard. Like you have all your content and you're able to just highlight things as you're talking about it uh, with the students. And as you are talking, it's recording you. So I'm going to press stop. OK, so that particular slide has a recording so I can actually move to the next slide to do another recording or I can X out to to view what that looks like so I can see here there's a recording here on this slide about learning and um, this one uh, learning about themes okay and if I actually play it in um, slideshow mode Hopefully it plays up. Uh, learning about themes in literature. And I'm it's playing in slideshow mode on my other screen. So let me go back here to show you what it looks like here. Give it, give it a second. So I'm going to replay it. Uh, learning about themes in literature. And I'm writing with my mouse so you could see. But if you actually had content on here, right, you would be able to um, you get the idea, right? So you're able to see the replay with the annotations, with the text, with everything that you have on your slide. And you're able to, um, you know, proceed to the next slide. So if this was the final slide, then you can X out. You can always re-record. So I'm going to press stop if I wanted to re-record because I didn't like how this turned out. I can certainly press the record button and re-record as well. Um, move on to the next slide. If I wanted to turn the camera off here, uh, I can certainly do that and I can just record. And it will just put a little voice thing on there. So th thank you students for joining um, this meeting. Don't forget. Oops, I pressed the button by accident. So I am going to re-record. That's the beauty of it. If you make a mistake, you can always go back and fix it. Thanks students for joining. Remember to complete your assignment and hit submit. Stop, it's there and I can X out.
and now I have a PowerPoint with content and each slide has notes and different things that the students are going to need to guide them through this particular lesson. Now, why, why is that important? There was actually a link that I wanted to kind of review with you. Let me find that link. I don't um, this is the article Ophelia and Carmen that I'm trying to to grab that th there's an article that talks about the the need for us to kind of switch how we are addressing um, teaching online lessons and why we need to kind of use these web based resources, these kind of techie resources with students so that we're engaging them more. Because if we're doing a lesson where we're in front of the kids for 60 minutes and all we're doing is talking to them, that is not effective for them. So we have to have a different approach to teaching during remote learning that really engages the students. So I wanted to point out a few points from this article here that addresses that. And oh, I had it here already loaded. See, that's my forgetfulness. So there were a few points here that I wanted to point out. Um, using high quality web based video resources in assignments. It's not only going to promote teamwork, but the development of critical thinking skills. So instead of just sitting and talking to the students and not sharing content at all, we we're not really doing them any justice doing that. We have to be able to engage them to be able to develop these skills. Um, and utilizing the flipped classroom model during this time is really what's going to be helpful for for the students. So instead of just watching us present content, they can watch a video that we record for them so that when we actually meet during those online cast class meetings, we can really personalize that learning experience for them to, you know, show them, walk them, scaffold them through um, those activities to, to, to have that active engagement, to give them opportunities to collaborate because during remote learning, they won't have on other opportunities to see their classmates and collaborate except for those class meetings. So when we are doing the, the recordings of the content for them to watch, you know, beforehand, we are giving them um, opportunities to have these options during our class meetings participation, frequent interaction and feedback and connections. So that's what I, I wanted to share with you in terms of kind of shifting our thinking a little bit um, so that we're able to see the purpose of why we need to record these lessons versus actually just sitting in front of the kids and for 60 minutes or 30 minutes or 20 minutes and just t you know giving them the lesson. If we record it and provide it to them and then use the online meeting for collaborative engagement tasks, then that will be more useful and beneficial for the students. OK, so you have your lesson and the lesson has been recorded by you. You have all your comments, you have all your annotations, you're ready to go. What am I going to do now to share this resource with students? I have to be able to save it as a video and then upload it to get a link to be able to share it with students. OK, but before we do that, there's one other option that I want to show you um, besides recording slideshow. Um, I want to show you the screen recording option. Screen recording is really terrific for those tutorials. You may want to do a quick walkthrough of a student with how to, um, you know, how to work a problem out, how to access something online. Um, so you create a screen recording. And so here what I'm going to do is click screen recording. It's going to minimize the PowerPoint to whatever I have in the background. So what I have to do is make sure um, whatever I whatever I want to do the screen recording on is open like the actual app is open. What I'm doing now is I'm just measuring the screen size that I want to record. So I want to record my whole screen and that's what it does. So this, I'm selecting my screen recording area basically. So I'm going to go to whatever it is that I want to um, do the screen recording on. OK, so I want to record a screen recording on this particular article. So I am going to select record. It's going to give me a countdown. OK, so once you access the article, 
I want you to take a look at some important points in the article, such as using high quality web based resources and assignments, promotes teamwork and develops the critical thinking skills of students. Additionally, I would like for you to pay close attention to the four key components of learning, especially during these remote learning times. We want to make sure students are participating in active engagement and collaboration through their participation in our online meetings and they have frequent interaction and feedback and they have connections to the real world experiences. So now that now that I'm done, um, you know, doing my screen recording, I can I can press stop, pause. I can pause it if I wanted to, like, let's say go to another app. And then continue the recording. OK, so that's why I would press pause. If I want to stop altogether, I click this little button here for stop. And then what's that? What that's going to do is it's going to take me back to the PowerPoint as soon as it loads. Right. It takes a little time. It looks like. My, my computer is again really really slowing down here so once i press stop <laughs> come on all right let me we'll try it again in case that again glitches happen it's technology that's what technology does we just have to figure out you know what to do next if we have an issue and not freak out so what you're seeing here is the actual video recording. You notice it just popped it in on the slide. So it's the video recording of what I just went through. So I'm going to hit play for you. OK, so once you access the article, I want you to take a look at some important points in the article, such as using high quality web based resources and assignments, promotes teamwork and develops the critical thinking skills of students. So you get the point, right? It is recording every single thing you're doing on that screen and everything you're saying. So you can truly walk students through a process here. You can help them. You can scaffold the learning for them. So before I go into how you're going to get, you know, get this content to the students in a video format, I want you to think about what you saw. You saw screen recording, which is what we're looking at here, where it records all of your screen. Um, you saw the recording of each slide in a presentation where you can have your video turned on and off, where you can do the annotations um, if you, with content on the slide. So I want you to think about how you can integrate that into your online class meetings, into what you already do. How can you use this to provide um, those engagement uh, flipped experiences for students and I want you to share think about it for a few seconds and share it in the chat so I'll get I'll pause I won't say anything and I'll give you some time to think so that you can answer in the chat and then after this we'll talk about how to get it to the students Carmen, Ophelia, do you guys want to share any of your experiences with this or any ideas that you see popping up in the chat? Yes, I wanted to share something that I had um, seen with my teachers. Uh, it was a math teacher. Uh, she was teaching statistics and she provided a, she already had a PowerPoint already made, but she wanted to provide that PowerPoint for students that were going to be absent. So again, same concept that we're doing now, we can give these uh, students this ahead of time. So they were gonna be absent. So she recorded and narrated over each slide explaining what she was doing. And I believe it was classification or groups in statistics, different kind of classification. So again, she used her existing PowerPoint, recorded um, her screen while she was uh, narrating each point on the slide. So that was really helpful. And then she basically shared it and sent it to the kids and they had access to it. Awesome. And think about your students. Remember we, we talked about in remote learning one on one compassion over content, right? All of our students have various needs 
various situations that's going on during this time. Some of them cannot attend every single online class meeting that we have. So how can we get information to them so they can still continue learning without being um, available when we want them to be available? Right. And so that this is this is an option that they have. They can use these videos that you create to participate in learning um, synchronously and still be able to uh, participate in your class. Uh, anything else, else from the chat, Carmen? Anything, um, I guess, from a secondary standpoint, secondary level standpoint that you want to share? Um, well, they, there's a lot of great options that um, that have been put in the chat. Um, I see one here, a screen recording to demonstrate features of a website like IXL.com because sometimes students get lost in the sauce and they don't quite know and they get frustrated. So these would be great ways to like show students where do they go first, where do they go second, how do they submit, um, especially secondary. And then I was also thinking of elementary school students, you know, my, my little boy is in first grade and he's not too big to be read to. So it would be a great time to, to read a, a story, you know, from the teacher, even though they have my on and things like that, but sometimes they want to hear from the teacher. And so it would be another great way for the teacher to interact with kids and do think alouds and all that, and then talk about the story later when they meet face to face. I love it. And I just saw this comment, allow students to preview elements in a story mm -hmm. in preparation for the discussion. That's a terrific example. So guys, yeah, I, I really want you to share how you feel you can do this so that you can learn from each other. Um, and we can, you know, you can get these best practices from each other. Um, so yes, definitely the, this is, this is uh, tying into the flipped classroom and being able to provide the content for kids beforehand so you can have that more interactive, personalized experience with them when you are meeting with them in the online environment. Okay, so now that you have some ideas of how you can use screen recording and slide recording, uh, how do you get it to your students? How do I get it from PowerPoint into a team? Right, so this is what I'm gonna show you next. So using the recording tab, if I scroll Obviously, these uh, there are other options here, like if I want to add a screenshot, if I want to add a video that's already done, if I want to adjust audio or add audio, record sound right on a slide. I have those options here under recording. But what I want to what I want to focus on is these two options here, where it says save. So, saving as a show, saving as a show is not a video. Saving as a show saves it as a a, a, a type of a PowerPoint presentation that is automatic. So if you have recordings and the students click on the show itself, the, the, the file that's the PowerPoint show, and I'm gonna show this to you. Let me, let me save it here on my device. Oh, where's the desktop? Downloads. So I'm gonna save it as a show. Come on. And I'm gonna go here to my files. So the sh goodness gracious, my 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 computer, and my screen is really. Um, it, it probably needs to have an update. All right, so here. I think I. Come on. Uh, about, about what it opened up on my other screen. So uh, learning about themes in literature. I can't see it. It opened up on my other screen. But basically, the show allows you to not have the students doesn't. They don't have to click on play. They don't have to click on anything. It automatically loops the sound, loops the annotation when you save it as a show, all the student is able to do is view it. It's kind of like a read only presentation with everything kind of um, automatically done. All your sound, all your your um, in your videos, your your play button, it just is automatic. So that's a one option. You have to save it as a show and then upload the show. But the better option is to really export it as a video. So you're going to 
click that option to export as a video. And as you can see here, there are lots of options for the video. There's a full HD option, ultra HD, HD. I typically go to standard because the larger your file, the longer it is going to take to render the file. So um, I typically do standard and I keep it at all of these re re recommended settings. So re using the recording timings and narration that is within the presentation, it's basing it off of what you have recorded on the slides, okay? Um, and then I hit create video. So now that video file is gonna be saved to my device. So it's being saved to my device. Now you have the option to upload the show, upload the video to your team. But I will say that the better way to do it is to integrate Microsoft Stream and think of Microsoft Stream as your um, secure version of YouTube that only people in Miami-Dade County will have access to. That's how you can think of Microsoft Stream. So once you have your video downloaded on your device, you're going to go to office.com, sign in. This is going to Office 365 in the portal, sign in. And then once you sign in, OK, good, it took me there. I am going to find the stream app icon in Office 365, and I'm going to click on stream. And then basically what I'm going to do is just upload the video into stream. And then through stream, I can edit, I can trim the video, I can grab a link to the video, and then I will share that link in my team to students. There are also lots of fun features in Stream as well. Um, Stream has interactive elements where you can embed a form, where you can um, have closed captioning and, and um, uh, transcripts. So here I'm going to click Create. I'm going to click Upload Video. And I am basically just grabbing the video from wherever on my computer I have that video saved. So for that video, I believe it was under downloads. And look, it's already done downloading. So I'm going to click it and I'm going to click. Oh, oh, it's not. It's, it's you see how it says zero bytes. It's still rendering. Still rendering. So just pretend that I had a video here. I would, I would have the video, I would upload it here, and once it's uploaded, under my content, you can go to my videos, and you'll be able to see whatever videos you, you have uploaded or um, have done through your online meetings. And then on the right-hand side where the ellipses are, here you can share, if you want to trim it, remember I said um, that you are able to trim a video. So you can grab the link here. Okay, copy the link. And then go into team. <laughs> I'm, th I'm moving too fast for it. So go into team. Oops. and go into your classroom. So let me just go here. And um, let's say I want to put the video link here. I can start a new conversation. Watch this video before the lesson. And I could put the link for the video here. And look, it automatically links it. And now we have the video for students to be able to watch it. OK, so you can you can definitely um, link the video 
and make it available to the students by posting it. Um, or you can add it as a tab if you'd like, because if you put it as a tab, there is there is an option to connect to stream. Um, right here, so you could bring in content from your stream right there. So that would be the way another way to do it too. Let's say you do your recording and you wanted to make it an assignment. You can actually click on assignments. And you could create an assignment for this particular activity. Let me just do that one. OK, create an assignment and we're going to talk more about assignments. I believe assignments is next week create an assignment and add the video as a resource. So here where it says add resource, I can add the video as a resource. And then I can put whatever steps I want the students to complete for this assignment. So I'm going to add the video as a resource link. And then if I want to attach like questions that the students should answer after watching the video, um, anything and then I make it an assignment and now the students have a video with me walking them through some steps or some a, a lesson and now they have questions that they have to answer and submit as an assignment. OK, but more about assignments will be discussed in a future webinar. I just wanted to show you that that's an option um, for using the, the videos as well. OK. Um, I want to show you one more thing in stream. When I click the little edit button, I, uh, to, uh, selecting a language will allow you to kind of turn on closed captioning for that particular um, video. And so when you turn on closed captioning, that's where the transcript over here, that's where the transcripts happen. So everything that is said in the video, all the sound you'll okay. be able to have that audio this meeting is being recorded and not a notification will go out to you that all the audio transcripts will show up additionally the students can turn on and off closed captions as they're watching the videos so and when they click that link participants they're seeing all of this and when you turn when you set that language on the transcripts with um whatever it is that you said will come up uh, this interactive component allows you to add a form and this gets into a lot more. We could talk about this and we actually have a training on forms next week, but it allows you to add a form and it embeds it right in the video. If you've ever used Edpuzzle or if you've ever used um, PlayPosit, it's very similar to that where you can have forms embedded in a video for it to stop at certain points for students to answer questions so that they're not just watching an hour long video. There is levels of interactivity in there. OK, so. I know that we've talked quite a bit. I am going to stop here, plus the 6.03. We're, we're a little over time. Uh, so I'm going to stop there. Resources are going to be provided in the chat. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I, I'll give like one minute or so if there's any burning questions that need to be answered. Anybody? Ophelia, Carmen, anything from the chat? Uh, Michelle, yeah, I'm trying to get a clarification. Uh, someone asked, Eileen asked, can you do this in Sway too? I'm not understanding. I, they can't. You can't do a, a recording in Sway, but I don't know. What, I'm trying to get clarification. Yeah, can you, yeah, please clarify what you mean when you ask, can you do it in Sway? What, what, what are you trying to do in Sway? Michelle? Yeah. Hi, um, thank you so much for uh, the webinars. I'm wondering, uh, our platform is Google uh, Classrooms, and I noticed that I'm using closed captioning with uh, with live dialogue that the closed captioning is not so accurate. Is that different um, in this platform in terms yeah, of- Yeah, it's very different, yes. It's, it's more intuitive in this platform because Microsoft does a lot of work, a lot of work with accessibility and making sure their languages are are accurate and their captioning is accurate. Thank you very much. You're welcome. OK, hopefully the person with the sway question, um, not really sure what you mean. So if you could clarify in the chat. Otherwise, uh, one more minute for questions. Anybody else with questions or comments? Any ideas that 
come to mind with how to use this? Feel free to unmute. So, hi, Michelle. It's hard. So, I see the question. Oh, I'm having such a hard time hearing you. So, you may have to type your question in the chat. I'm sorry. I can't really nope, hear. Not me. Um, Carmen? Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to answer a question. I'm muting everybody. Okay. So the question, and now I have to go back to the question. There was a question from somebody about Mac. So Mac and Microsoft, I'm a Mac user. Mac and Microsoft don't always get along. I would highly recommend if you're using Safari to stop using Safari and try using Chrome. Chrome works a little bit better with Microsoft. Um, and also, you know, there are tutorials about using all of this with Mac, and I would look look some of those up. Does anybody yeah. have any other questions? We're, we're the please guys remember these webinars that we're doing, they're 30 minutes. It yeah. is not meant for you to be a master. We're introducing you to the tool. We're also helping you by providing resources um, at the end of the call, during the call. It's really up to you to utilize these resources to further explore these tools to see how it can fit into the needs of your teaching and meet the needs of your students. So you all have to kind of, you know, take this on and play with the tools. You won't break them. <laughs> Just play with them. OK, thank you, Michelle. I'm putting into the chat box one last time. This is the link. <laughs> to our YouTube channel, all of the videos, I'm sorry, all of the webinars that we have done so far will be available. This for today, it takes a day or so, it's six o'clock, I'm not going to do all this right now, but most of all of these webinars that we've done will be on the YouTube channel. You'll be able to watch them stop and pause and play around. Also next week, four new webinars, same dream team, Carmen, Michelle, and Ophelia, Wed register on our website that link is there as well okay everybody so okay. it's dinner time miller time whatever time it is for you enjoy the rest of your evening if you have any questions feel free to email me um your question about how to save the chat it'll be in the in the yeah. um, you can't save a chat what you can do is the chat will be available in the top left side of your team when you click chat just search for the title of this training um, I believe it's under utilizing whiteboard and you'll be able to see all of the the, ch the chat information. If there's only something from the chat, like one thing from the chat that you want to save, you just have to copy and paste it so you don't have to scroll all the way up and down. Okay. And to the question to show one more time how to add recording options that will be on the recording that you'll be able to go back to tomorrow and review. OK, and, and there's a video. There is a video in the resources that have been shared with you that has like a one minute 30 second um video of how to add that recording tab so you know those resources that we're share sharing is aligned to what we're covering in this sessions in these sessions okay so please explore them okay everybody have a wonderful evening have a great weekend we'll see you next week tuesday 4 30. all new webinars go to our website to register and make sure you put your email address in correctly. I get so many teachers saying, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't get in. That's because you put your email address in the wrong spot. So please make sure that you put your correct email address, double check it before you hit submit and put your email address in the actual field that says email address. <laughs> I thank you guys. See you later. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank Bye you. everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Carmen.